Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're doing a follow-up to a video I made about three years ago that allows you to create an edit mode for your databases where normally the user can just view what's on the form and if they want to edit it, they have to click an edit button and this prevents accidental changes and things like that. But the one downside of the method that I used in that video is that it locks everything on the form, all of the fields. What if you want to leave certain fields unlocked so that you can edit them regardless? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Today's question comes from Ken in Rancho Cordova, California. That just sounds cool, Rancho Cordova. One of my gold members. Ken says, I'm interested in having my form be read only by default with an edit button to make it writable. I just saw your videos about edit mode. In my case, I have a combo box in the header that selects a record, but it becomes frozen if I set the form's allow edits property to false. The only workaround I found is to set the locked property for all the individual controls, but that's a lot of VBA if the form has many controls. Is this the best way to do it or is there a better approach? Yes, that is the best way to do it, but you're right. If you got a lot of controls, that's a lot of work. Not only is it a lot of work to write in the first place, but it's a lot of work to maintain it. If you add fields or delete fields, you got to constantly update your code. So the best way to do it is to simply loop through all of the controls on your form and lock the ones you've specified. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. But first, this is part two. So if you haven't watched part one yet, Here's the original video. Go watch this first. This is pretty helpful. Um, and it includes all the other prerequisites you should know before today, like basic VBA and stuff like that. So go watch this video first for sure. We're also going to use the tag property today. I just released this video yesterday. So go watch this. We are going to use a for each loop to loop through all of the controls on our form. And we're not going to create a function today, but we are going to create a subroutine today. It's very similar to this. A subroutine just doesn't return a value like a function does. But go watch this so you understand how to create your own procedures, right? Subroutines and functions. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. You'll find the links down below. Go watch those and then come on back. Okay, here I am in the Tech Help Free Template. This is an older version that I built uh, three years ago that I used for the original video. And in here, you can see that if I try typing, I can't, I'm trying to type right now, all these fields are locked. Okay, everything's locked. And I have to hit the edit mode button and it goes into edit mode, it says right here. And in the extended cut, I show you how to do cool stuff like change the colors and all that, that's not a big deal. But now I can come in here and I can edit stuff. Okay, now the problem that Ken is having is that he's got a search combo box across the top of the form and that will also get locked with this method. Right, I got a video on how to do that where you can put a combo box up here and it will search for records based on the data in your form. But this will become locked, which means you can't change its value. And why is that? Well, it's what we used to lock this form. If you go into the edit mode button, you'll see it's right here. Me allow edits, true. Me allow deletions, true. Right? Otherwise, there it's false. So we set that in the form current event. And once you set allow edits to false, that means all of the fields are locked. The user can't change anything, even unbound fields. So what we're going to do is instead, we're going to use the locked property of each individual control. All right. Now, to do them all would be time consuming because you'd have to say first name dot locked. If I could spell locked equals this is the form current event. So true. All right. Last name dot locked equals true and so on through all of them and that becomes a nightmare of updating all of your your forms right not only do you have to type them all out here once for every single control on here that you want to lock but if you add stuff if you delete stuff you got to come in here and change your code which i hate to do so what we're going to do instead is we're going to use the tag property we're going to tag the fields that we want to lock and then we're going to loop through all of the fields on the form and lock the ones that have that tag. Make sense? All right, so come back over here. We're gonna go into the properties. All right, and you remember from yesterday's video, we got this tag property on here that's just sitting there waiting for you to do something with it. Well, we're gonna do something cool with it right now. All right, so I want you to click and then hold down the shift key and click on all of the controls in here, the text boxes that you want to lock. 
when this routine runs. Let's also lock this checkbox. We're gonna leave notes unlocked. So no matter what, the user can come in here and change the notes. They don't have to go into edit modes. So we'll leave this guy unlocked just to show that this works. Now over here in the tag property, we're gonna put something unique so that when our code runs, it knows which fields to lock. I'm just gonna put in lock me. One word, lock me. We're gonna look for that in our loop, okay? All right, let's save changes. And that should be applied to all of those fields now. They should all have lock me. If you click on anyone individually, it'll say lock me, lock me, lock me. That one does not have lock me, okay? All right, back into our code. Now, I'm gonna call this code twice. I'm gonna call it here, and I'm gonna call it here. I'm just gonna flip the value whether we're locking it or not. So we're gonna make that our own subroutine up here, okay? This will be a private sub. We're gonna call it lock fields, and we're gonna send into it a value. Are we locking or not locking, right? Are we locking or unlocking? We'll call it do lock, and that'll be a Boolean, a yes, no, a true, false value. Okay, now how do we loop through all of the fields on a form? Well, those fields are actually called controls. All right, so we're gonna dim CTL as control. All right, so CTL is now a variable that is of a type control. What's a control? All of these things are controls. What's a Britain? Well, we're all Britons. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so that's a control, that's a control, that's a control. The labels are controls. That's a control. These buttons are controls. These are all controls, okay? So we're gonna loop through all of them. How do you loop through all of them? Well, we're gonna say for each CTL in me.controls. Next, all right, it's a for each loop. All right, now inside this loop, we can access each one of those controls, right? Because it's gonna loop through every control on the form. And what we're gonna say if CTL.tag, if the tag property of the current control says do lock or lock me. Lock me is what you put in there, right? Lock me, lock me. That's the text in the tag. If that's the case, then ctl.locked equals either true or false. We're sending that value in here as do lock. So do lock. And if, and that's the end of our loop. And that's it. That's how you loop through all of the controls on the current form. Me is the current form, right? Whatever form you're on. So in each loop, the CTL value gets set to whatever control we're on. First name, last name, all the labels, all the whatever, the combo box, all the stuff, right? And if we see lock me in its tag property, so basically don't put lock me in the tag property of any type of control that can't be locked, otherwise you'll get an error. Okay, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right, now down here in our form current event, we're going to say lock fields true, right? As we move through the records and open up the first one, we're gonna lock all the fields. And then in here, we'll get rid of this, and now we'll say lock fields false. When they click on the edit button, we're gonna unlock everything. All right, debug compile once in a while. Come back out here, save it, close it, save it, close it, open it. All right, now by default, locked, locked. I'm trying to type, locked, locked. This is unlocked. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 wait, hold on. I can't type in here, what's going on? I'm glad this came up because in the original database, remember what we did is we set all the properties in here for the form to allow edits, no, allow deletions, no. Those are the default properties for the form itself. So we gotta turn those back on to yes. All right, allow deletions, allow additions should be yes. Otherwise you can't, because remember our code before would switch those values. Okay, all right, I'm glad that came up. Because in case you're using the same database, you're gonna be scratching your head, just like I was for about three seconds. I'm like, wait a minute, what happened? All right, save it, save it, close it, open it. Now we should be able to not edit here and we can edit here. Okay, good. Okay, can't edit there. All right, hit the edit button. Boom, we're in edit mode now. And now these fields are all unlocked. Okay, and if I move to the next record, they should get locked again, which they did. Beautiful, perfect. One more thing, bonus time. It's bonus time. You ready for some bonus? It's bonus time. Excellent. I was thinking about throwing this in, a, in an extended cut, but it's, it's too short to make an extended cut out of, so I figured I'd just make it a bonus. All right, you ready? How about we uh, gray out all the fields when they're locked? How's that sound? All right, that way the user can visually see that they're locked. Well, come back in here, come back in here, and we're gonna say if do lock, then 
ctl.backcolor equals, what do you want to make it? I'm going to use gray, and I like to control the colors with the RGB function. I'm going to go 200, 200, 200, and that's like a dark gray. Otherwise, ctl.backcolor equals VB white. There's a constant for that. We can use that. And of course, yeah, I got a video on RGB and how to use all the colors. All right, go watch this if you want to learn more. Okay, so if we're locking, set these colors to gray. If not, set them to white. Debug compile. Now something interesting is about to happen. Watch this. Save it. Close it. Close it. Open it. Oh, object doesn't support this property or method. What's going on? Debug. Control.backcolor. Um, okay, what does that mean? Well, you can't see what the control is, right? You could, if you want to do a little troubleshooting, if you can't figure it out, you could come and, oh, look at those. That's interesting. Look at that. It's got some of them gray, but it didn't. I'll explain why in a second. But if you want to know what the control is, watch this. I'm going to just, for some troubleshooting in here, I'm going to go debug.print ctl.name. Now, what does debug.print do? Well, it prints down here in the immediate window, which you can't see right now. Turn on the immediate window. That's a little window down here. That's where all your debug messages go. I got a whole separate video on the immediate window. Here it is, I'll put a link down below. But what this will do is it will let you see the name of the control before it throws that error, right? So save it, debug compile, and notice some errors, they'll get through the compiler. There's no compile errors here. This is a run, what's called a runtime error, all right? Now let's do this again, open them up, and oh, okay, look at this, all right. Object doesn't support this method. All right, debug. So what is control name? It's is active. See the last one down here, is active. What is is active? Let's stop the compiler. Is active. Oh, that's the checkbox. Checkbox doesn't have a back color property. That's what's throwing the error message. Okay. So there's a couple ways you can handle this. We can turn this off now. We can get rid of this. A couple ways you can handle it. First, you could check to see what the type of control is and if it has a back color property. That's a lot of work. If you want to do that, that's fine. The other thing you could do is you could use some basic error handling, all right? Right before the, the stuff that you know is gonna throw an error, say on error, resume next. And then after it, say on error, go to zero. That'll turn error handling back off. Because you wanna know if this is gonna throw an error message. That's kind of important. But this, you know it's gonna throw an error message. Sometimes that's okay. We'll just ignore errors right now and then turn it back on when this is done. I do this all the time. And there's no there's no shame in using on error resume next as long as you use it responsibly. It's like there's no shame in having a glass of wine with your steak. Just drink responsibly. <laughs> and of course, you guessed it. I got a video on error handling. Go watch this if you want to learn more. All right, but now debug compile and then close it. Save changes, yes. Close it, close it, save it, open it. Ready, go. Ah, uh, no errors and everything is properly grayed out. See? Can't click on that, can't change that. Okay, can still change here. Let's go into edit mode. Click, ah, oh, look at that, isn't that cute? Isn't that pretty? Can you make this a toggle button? Sure, you can make it toggle, so you can toggle back and forth between edit and not edit. I figure once you're into edit mode, it's pretty much done. You could change this to a save button, right? I have another video that I cover of how to do that, how to hit it, make, make a save button, because a lot of people, especially people who are coming from Excel, they're used to having to save their work when they're done with it. They don't realize that if you just close this, Access saves that data for you, right? Here's that video. Just make them a save button. Turn that edit button into a save button. Just change the caption on it. And then all you have to do is read the properties of one of the fields or the, read the caption if it says edit mode. Then you can just switch it back and, and lock all the fields again or close the form or whatever you want to do. I, my job is just to show you all the Legos. You put them together however you want. Speaking of the Legos, if you like this stuff, if you like learning VBA programming with me, if you're enjoying it, if you want to make your databases go to a whole new level, check out my developer lessons. My developer lessons don't jump around like the tech help videos do. The tech help videos, I got to say, well, we're going to do this, then we're going to do that. It's, it's pieces, parts from different videos. The developer lessons are designed step by step from the beginning to cover stuff in order the way you should learn it. So it's all one continuous thing. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, I got lots and lots of videos. If you like my style, come and check them out. You'll find a link down below. But that's going to do it, folks. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.
If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.